All right, everybody, welcome to Team Spirit Team meeting in the evening. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> um, but tonight's topic is going to be like, you know how I usually keep these about 15 minutes to 30 minutes long. And I do that because um, I just want you guys to like something quick that you can do um, to improve your business, right? Or to learn something new to be able to improve your business. So the two topics I'm going over is the secrets to going live and how to make an online presence. Oh, that's okay, Anna, no worries. We're just now getting started, so that works. Um, so there's so much I could talk about the secrets to going live and so much I could talk about an online presence. I probably could talk about that all day. You know, that's just one of those things that I could talk about all day, but I'm just gonna give you a couple tips. So um, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is going live and so first of all when you're going live you need to think ahead about what you're going to say and do because if you just kind of go live just to just wing it you don't usually engage people and you want to keep them engaged and if they're not on right away people watch recordings but if they're not engaged right away you're not going to watch it so make sure that you think about what you're going to do in advance and and plan it just like a party you know, because whatever you're going to do live, you know, even if it's just talking about a product or whatever it is, plan it. So make it informational and fun and not all about Tupperware. Or if you're using this for something different, it can't be all about what you're doing, you know. So for example, for example, um, I was going live a lot in September and doing a lot of videos in September. And they were talking about the pressure cooker a lot. But I was giving a lot of informational tips on food and cooking in general. And saying, like, if you don't have the pressure cooker, you can do this meal in a crock pot. It will take twice as long, and it probably won't be as good, but it'll still be good. So if you have a crock pot at home and you want to try these recipes, you can do that. And I'll tell people that. It's not going to be the exact same thing, but if you want to try it, that's great. Or I give them tips about... You know, if you use this instead of this product, or not product, um, ingredient, it will taste better, it'll be less calories, right? So tips, you know, if you, either, both of you, I know that are on right now, and I know that a lot of people watching um, have seen me live, or gotten, I don't mean live like on Facebook Live, but I mean like live in person, like doing parties. And at the parties, I made a lot of, I call them tougher tips, but they're really just regular tips and life hacks that we do, right? Like like the, the the onion, right? Most of the smell comes from the hair in. Don't cut that off, cut around it. That has nothing to do with Tupperware. Although I do say, make sure you use a Tupperware knife and I will you know, demonstrate it and use a Tupperware knife. But these are tips that people use. When I make the salsa and I put the chips in the chip bowl, that's part of my life hacks. You know, flip it upside down and open it because then you have the crumblies on top or the bottom and then your fluffies on top. People like these kind of tips. I call them Tupper tips, but that's just because it's a fancy name that I use. It's information and it's fun. So make it informational, fun, and not all about Tupperware because if you're constantly saying Tupperware, Tupperware, Tupperware and throwing it in their face, they don't care. I mean, you want people to watch your stuff whether they're buying from you or not because that's how you create trust. And there are some people that won't buy until they know and trust you. And there are some people that you'll wear down after a while because they're like, yeah, you know, I've been watching this for a little while. I think I do want to buy it. And there are some people that are really quick to buy, like, I need that right now, right? So there's different kinds of people. Number two is give legit, oh, I kind of said that. I guess I put one and two together. Give legit tips and tricks to give value to who is watching. So know your audience. You know, um, for example, it, I, I used to do baby food cooking classes all the time, and I haven't done one in a while. I should actually do one um, again. But do you have babies? No. But I did a whole lot of research on it, like tons and tons and tons of research, so I could be very informed about it. So whether you're using our products or not, you could take my tips and use them somewhere else. The point is, I want them to buy my product, of course. But I also want them to trust me, and I want them to feel value for their time. You know, I mean, that, that's the biggest thing is value. 
Um, number three is, I, I, again, I'm saying one, two, three, but I kind of put them all together. Don't constantly talk, sell, 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 buy, 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 you know? Buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, because they're not going to buy it. Sell, 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 sell. It's all about the total package. It's about the value that you bring. And you know what? That's for whether you're going live on Facebook or you're going live in a party, like personally live, like you're there. When you think about this, these are tips that you're gonna use in everything you do. You don't want people to feel like you're constantly selling them. You know, when people leave my parties, they don't usually feel sold to and they don't feel like I'm being pushy. And I've asked plenty of people, do you feel like I'm a pushy salesperson? No. But they say, but you're really good. And I'm only really good at it because I practiced and I know how to give value. So if I'm selling a product that's $149, I need to make the value for that so good. So they felt like their time was valuable. They felt like the tips I gave were valuable and that the product is valuable. So it's like a big circle effect. So those are secrets to going live and not just Facebook live, like I said, but live in person. So now we're going to talk about how to make an online presence. And this might be a little confusing at first, um, but trust me, I got points to all of it. <laughs> so first of all, um, I think that I'm going to kind of give you some Facebook tips. Actually, I think that's, even though I have notes right here, I'm going to go off of them for just a couple of seconds because these are tips that I think everybody needs to know. First of all, it's called Facebook for a reason. So your face should be the picture on your Facebook page. I'm not talking about your banner. I'm talking about your picture. And this is a huge problem. I've trained this for years because I'll have people friend me and I have no idea who they are. I mean, I'm like, I don't remember their name. And so I'm clicking through all their pictures and I can't find anybody that I actually know if it's them or none of them have, it's all their kids or it's all their dogs or it's, it's not them. I will not accept the friend request and neither will somebody else in this day and age, especially unless they absolutely know it's you. It's gotta be your face. Um, you're building a company, you're building, you know, your own brand, you're building your business. And whether you're building a business or not, it's still etiquette in Facebook, Facebook, right? But um, if you're definitely wanting to build a company or have any kind of social media presence at all online, even a little bit, you got to have your picture. And it doesn't have to be a picture with a Tupperware product. It doesn't have to be like a professional picture, but it has to be clearly you. Clearly you. So that's um, one, to make a good online presence. Two is be very careful what you post on your page. So there are three pages. There's your personal page, there's a business page where people like it, and there's a VIP group, and I'm going to introduce a fourth page to you, and that's your branding page, okay? Some of you might be ready for the branding page, some of you might not be yet. But those, are, see how I can't seem to do this? But I can do this. Okay, well, anyways, four pages. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. Um, the first one is your personal Facebook page. I know if you're newer that you're gonna post on there because it's kind of how you're gonna like warm up your market a little bit, but it really is an 80-20 rule. And you can't just post things on there about the sales. Uh, if you literally just post the sales on there, people don't care promise you it's not gonna work you might maybe get a sale or two out of it especially if you're newer and they haven't seen Tupperware in a while but chances are probably not people want value right so if you're gonna post something um, okay I'm gonna give you an example I'm gonna share my screen for just a second so let me give you an example uh, finder documents product pictures okay so for example instead of just posting the ice cream scoop i made this best ice cream scoop ever why is the ice cream scoop the best it will not rust it will cut through hard ice cream it retains heat it's only 29 dollars. last scoop you'll ever have to buy so you see how that gives more value than just posting a sale right it gives more value so here's something else that you can do with that go live with it and show different uses say this is really hard ice cream watch it cut right through it. It cuts through an avocado perfectly. So take an avocado and scoop out an avocado perfectly, right? These are like little tips and tricks 
and that gets them to want to buy it. So it's not necessarily just buy this product. And this is even on sale right now. It's just something I wanted to show you for an example. Just wanted to give you an example. All right, let me close that up. All right, so that's just an example of what not to post. It's the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 personal, 20% business. Um, recently, I was talking with this girl who's not in Tupperware, she's in another drug sales company, and we were talking about like just branding and things like that and kind of going through ideas, and she was like, can you give me some advice? And I said, sure, um, I can. Let me look at your Facebook page and your business page. She didn't have a business page, so we went through her Facebook page, and I literally scrolled through for the last year, and I think she had one thing on there that was personal, all of it was about her business. And I said to her this, I said, I want you to know that my best friend in the whole world, the girl that I've known since I was pretty much born, the one that's like my sister, her family is like my family. She's my best friend and she sells the same product that you do. And she goes, yeah. And I said, and I turned off her notifications online and no longer watch her. And she's like, really? And I go, and I promise you, little to no one's watching you right now at all. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I said, it's too much. People don't care. You know, all you're doing is throwing products in their face. They don't care. Even people who do care a little bit or love you, you're doing too much. And that was a huge eye opener for her. And I think that's an eye opener for all of us is that if you're just posting that stuff on there, you're literally losing an audience and losing friends. And you're also giving yourself and the company a bad name because we're, it makes it look like that we're constantly pushing things in your face. So when people say to me, I don't want to be a pushy salesperson, I don't want to be pushy. If you're being pushy, that means you're pushing them away, right? There's no need to push. There's no need to pull. There's just that simple balance of you're going to talk about the product. You're going to show how amazing it is. And either you're going to want it or you're not, right? But by posting all of that stuff, it's push, 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 push. So think about that when you're posting of the 80-20 rule. People want to know you. The people want to know your family. The people want to know that. That's why they're your friends on Facebook to begin with, right? So that's how on your personal Facebook page. On your VIP page, that is almost all sales. I post sales like crazy in my VIP page. Sales, sales, sales. And I don't over post, by the way, but that's why they're on there. They're on there because they want to know what's on sale and they want to know what the deals are. I very rarely post anything else on there but sales because they don't want it. I mean, sometimes I might post a recipe and they're like, oh, thanks. But for the most part, they just want to know what's on sale. And again, I try to post in there once or twice a week, not all the time, because I'm in other people's like um, groups or VIP groups and I literally shut them off, even if I'm interested in the product because they're posting too much. I think posting even once a day is too much. It's ridiculous. No one wants to see that much, right? So I'm saying, honestly, you can post one to four times a week unless there's something really big going on, and then I warn them, hey guys, there's something really big going on. I'm gonna post something every single day just so you're caught up and in the know for the next week or so. I gotta give them a heads up on it. That way they're like, all right, it's only gonna be like this for a little bit, I'm not going to shut her off because people shut off. And I, will, I invite you to ask yourself, how many people have annoyed the crap out of you with notifications and going into groups and you're like, I don't give a crap, right? You want to support them. You want to be there for them. And you might even buy every once in a while, but you shut them off or you leave the group. You don't have to raise your hand, but I guarantee you, you've done it. I guarantee it. It's happened. And I can tell you there are two three companies that I can think of right now that that's what they train their sales force to do. And that's why they don't stay in business very long or it's a fad or it's something that people don't want to complain about right now. It's because of the sales technique, right? And this is not a good sales technique. I mean, it's a good, it's a good short term, not long term. And I think long term, big picture. Let me look at my notes. Where did I leave off here? Okay. So your VIP group is all sales. Your business page that's what it is. It's all about business. And it doesn't have to be, I don't mean like sales. I mean like, um, so your business page and if you decide to go with a group, like a, a private group page, um, they kind of go hand in hand. All right. And this is where we're going to talk a little bit about kind of like your branding because you should kind of think about what's going to set you apart from other people in this business. How many people sell Tupperware? Well, I know there's not that many in our, in our like my area, I know this because I live here, right? But there are some areas that there's more than others. And there's a lot of people online. So how do you set yourself apart? What makes you different? 
So I found my niche. You gotta find your niche of what you really like, and that's why, whether you're online or not, this is gonna help you in your parties. Um, I like to be called the food consultant. I like talking about food and cooking at my parties and giving all of the tips of food because I can't really eat a lot of it. And the stuff that I can't eat, it's, it's not easy to come by all the time and it's not always easy to make. So I talk simple. My, my whole brand is simple. It's like a simple success. Like how can I be successful in life? Um, I'm going to tell you about that in a second. Anna just made a comment and I'm going to tell you guys about that in a second because you're going to laugh so hard. But, um, I feel like being successful in life is not just like in, in your business, but I mean like successful in your life in cooking and successful and make it simple, right? You want to make things simple and successful. So that's what I, why I thrive for is simple and success. And that's my thing. So whether it's organization, like let me help you organize your cupboards simply, and then you can feel successful every time you open your cupboards, right? If it's modular mates, or or it's gonna be cooking a meal because you can cook a meal in 20 minutes or less, and it's gonna be so successful and simple, right? That's my brain, that's what I go off of. And when I'm at my parties, do the same thing. How can I make your life more simple? It can do this because this pressure cooker, you can make a whole meal in 30 minutes or less. I love the pressure cooker because you can make it so simple, right? You don't need all the complications. And so I love simple and I use that word so much and I didn't even realize it until this year how much that word has made a difference in my life. So think about what your brand can be or what your theme is or what you like. Like I know, for example, maybe an example, this, girl, this woman, not girl, this woman named Judy Dockery. She's been in the business for many, 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 many years, like 35 years or so. She's um, a business leader. And she only does modular mates at her parties. Only. And I remember watching her many times doing like her whole demonstration. And I remember once I was bold enough to raise my hand and I said, you've been doing this for how many years and you do how many parties a week? And she's like, oh, two to four or five parties a week. And I said, you're trying to tell me that you do the same party and have for the last 20, 30 years. She goes, yes. I said, so you're telling me that people are dating a party to have a party at their house of the exact same one that you're having here. Yes. How do you do that? And people not get bored. And she says, because it's information and they want it. And I'm all about organizing. And, and I don't know if she used the word simple. I know I use it. So that maybe that's what I hear in my head. But basically, she's simplifying how to um, make more money in your kitchen, right? She's all about saving money. That's her big thing is saving money and saving space and saving waste. That's what she does. So she's the modular make queen. That's her thing. That's her niche. And she makes a ridiculous amount of money doing it. And then she sh shares with people, you can um, buy them outright. You can have a party and get them half off for free, or you can join my team and you can get them um, on discount and make money at the same time. And she sells that like crazy. There are some people that are like fundraising queens and that's what they go after because they're all about helping people. That's like their brand. They want to help people. So they go after fundraisers um, and that's all they do is fundraisers or they do majority fundraisers, but they legit work the business like that. So I really like the food consultant. That's how I like it, making food simple. And that's why I use like the pressure cooker, the stack cooker, I use the steamer and I use the grill. Those are like my four biggies. And depending on what I feel like taking to a party or when I'm talking to the consultant or, or excuse me, the hostess or what's on sale is what I take to the parties. So um, I, kind of, I kind of went off a little bit on this because I wanted to explain more about it because I wanted you to understand where I was going to go with this next part because this next part is basically whatever your group is going to be like, that's kind of what your brain is going to be like. So I have this group now, and it's called Simply Made Simple, Simple Made Simple, excuse me. And um, I post in there recipes, I post in there ideas, I post in there things that can make life simple. And some of, most of it has nothing to do with Tupperware. I would say 60% Tupperware, 40% not. And actually the 60% that is Tupperware, it's kind of like hidden in there. Because I don't want them to think that they're in another Tupperware group. I want them to get value out of the group. 
I want them to come there to have the information. I want to be the resource for them when it comes to food or organization or making things simple, right? That's what I want for them. And that's how I am leveraging my business page and I'm leveraging this group page. And I think that's kind of advanced. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I'm not sure if this is something I would do as a beginner. I think as a beginner, I would think about what your niche is now or what you kind of like to do. And if you don't know, start playing with things and practicing. It took me years to find my niche. So it's not something you might find overnight, or it might be. You might be like, this is it, this is, I feel it, this is what I want, that's totally fine. But I want you to start thinking about it now because no one talked to me about this in the beginning. And I think I would have found something earlier on if I would have had it in my mind, you know, if I would have thought about it, if I would have really put forth effort into that. So I think the things that are the most important to remember are the first half of what I said and the second half is really like about your online presence, um, more um, like your branding that I'm talking about. I think that's something I want you to start thinking about now. And we're going to dive into that a little bit later. So um, the first part was all about the secrets to going live, right? And the second part is kind of how to make an online presence. And I think those two, those things are very simple that anybody can do. But the next part with the branding, I don't want you to get so wrapped up in it because I've watched people when I've done trainings like this before, get so wrapped up in their head that they're like, I don't know what my brand is. I can't work this business. And it has, this has nothing to do with working your business. It's just how to get to the next step or how to like define yourself or how to feel really comfortable with what you're going to talk about with people. And so that's kind of why I think it's easy or it's nice to like talk about it right now in the beginning stages. So, all right. Any questions whatsoever? Post them in the chat. Um, while you're posting in the chat on, on a, for dinner, we had tamales. Um, Corky went to Lola's and bought some tamales and they were amazing. And very filling. So it was, it was really great. So yes, like she's like, she says in here, you can eat tamales now, LOL. Yes, I can eat tamales. They're really heavy. Um, not really heavy, but kind of heavy. So I can't eat them a whole lot, but, um, not an energy booster. That's for sure. But they are pretty amazing and I love, love, love them. So, all right. Well, no questions. That's totally fine. I just want you guys to know, um, wait until Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want you guys to know that um, there's a whole thing, there's a whole world out there in online sales, but most of all of it is really perfecting the in-person because it's the same thing. They go hand in hand. It's just a matter of people get so freaked out about being online doing things, um, but really it's really just facing your fear and doing it in person first because that's where the confidence is going to come to be able to go online live or be able to do online parties, or to be able to have that online presence. So I say, do what you're doing right now. Practice what you're practicing now. Go with your parties. If you're doing Facebook parties, go with them. If you're doing um, online, or excuse me, um, in-home parties, go with them. If you're doing both, really work on how to perfect them by practice. Don't overcomplicate things, make it simple. I have a question. When people know you in person, they will follow you on Facebook. Exactly, and really a comment on a question. I, I love that, it's so true. And that's how I got a following on Facebook was through my in-home parties. That's really how it, where it came from. And when people say, um, I try it all, I say, well, you really do need to be in front of live people. So if you're sitting behind your desk and you're doing nothing or sitting behind your phone and you're doing nothing, you're probably not going to get as many followers. People want to know you, right? So that's really how, um, that's really the, the gist of it. So I hope tonight was super helpful and went over by a minute. Well, actually, I kind of didn't because we started a little bit late, so I'm pretty good on time. But I really hope that you guys loved it all. You have a super sparkly day. If you're traveling tomorrow, good luck on your travel. And thank you for getting on, and I will see you guys later. Bye.